Hey students, today we're going over Unit 4, Module 4, Session 2, titled Number Relationships. Number 1 says 3 fourths of 12. So remember, when we see a problem like this, we're thinking of what is 12 divided by 4. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now that is 1 fourth of 12, but we want 3 fourths of 12. So again, if 1 fourth of 12... 1 fourth of 12 equals 3, 3 fourths is 9, because 9 times 3 is, or excuse me, 3 times 3 is 9. So if 3 fourths of 12 is 9, then 75 hundredths times 12, now isn't 75 hundredths and 3 fourths equivalent? Yes, they are. So, three, so 75 hundredths times 12 also equals 9. And then 75 times 12, I can see a relationship between 75 hundredths and 75. 75 is 100 times more than 75 hundredths. So the answer here would be 100 times more than this. So it's 100 times more than 9? 9 hundred. Continuing on to number 2, 1 fourth of 8. So again, I think 8 divided by 4 is 2. It's just one group, so 1 fourth of 8 is 2. 25 hundredths, again, is the same. 25 hundredths is the same as 1 fourth. So 25 hundredths times 8 is also 2. And 25 times 8, again, I know 25 is 100 times more than 25 hundredths. So my product, or the answer to my multiplication problem, is going to be 100 times more than 2, so the answer is 200. Let's look at number 3, 1 fourth of 9. Now, hmm, if 1 fourth of 8 is 2, I know 9 is 1 more than 8, so what's 1 fourth of that one whole? You're right, 25 hundredths. And so my answer is going to be 2 and 25 hundredths. And now going to the next one, 25 hundredths times 9, the answer is going to also be 2 and 25 hundredths. And now 25 times 9, again my product is going to be 100 times more than 2 and 25 hundredths. So 25 hundredths times 100 is 25, so we move all digits, shift all digits in place value, 2 times 100 is 200. So my answer is 2 or 225. Number 4. 3 fourths of 82. So I'm going to think 4 or I'm going to think 80 divided by 4. Again 80 divided by 4. Well I know 80 divided by 4 is 20 and 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. So my answer is going to be 20 and a half, but that is 1 fourth of 82. So 1 fourth of 82, here's my thinking, I thought 1 fourth of 82 equals 20 and a half. Now I want 3 fourths, so I need to take this 20 and a half and I need to find 3 groups of it. So 20, 40, 60 plus three halves. Three halves is one and a half, so 60 plus one and a half, you're right, equals 61 and a half. So 75 hundredths times 82 equals 61 and a half. 75 times 82, it's gonna be 100 times greater. So that's going to be 6,150. Let's move on to number five. We have, we're looking at standard multiplication algorithm, 873 times 27. Now, if it's easier for you to solve it out on the side and then fill in the boxes, please do so. I know for me, sometimes it's easier to do so. So we're gonna do that now. Seven times three is 21. Seven times seven is 49, plus two is 51. 7 times 8 is 56, plus 5 
is 61, that's right. Moving on to our tens place. Sort of hold our place value. Two times three is six. Two times seven is 14. We're gonna carry that one, we're gonna cross out that five and two since we're done with it. Two times eight is 16 plus one is 17. Now we're going to add. 1 plus 0 is 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, 4 plus 1 is 5, 6 plus 7 is 13, 1 plus 1 is 2. So now we can fill in our boxes over here. We see in the first box is a 1, next is a 0, over here there's a 7, and my answer is 23,571. Let's do that for the next one as well. So right off on the side, 304 times 89. 9 times 4, 36. 9 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. 9 times 3 is 27. Hold our place value, moving to the tens place. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. 8 times 3 is 24, and we add 6, 5, 10, 7, 2, 27,056. Now we can fill in our boxes over here with a 3 and a 6, a 4, a 0, and a 6. Number 6. Fill in the table to round numbers to the nearest 10, 1 tenth, and a hundredth. So we're rounding to the nearest tenth, or excuse me, to the nearest 10 first. So the nearest 10 is right here. We're going to look to the right. We see a 6. And so my number is going to be 510. Looking now to the next, we see to the ones place. So to the ones, I look to the right. I see a 3. So my number is going to be 506. Rounded to the nearest 1. Now we see rounded to the nearest 10th. So we underline the tenths, we look to the right, we see zero. So my number is going to be 506 and 3 tenths. Looking now to the hundredth. Hundredth, we're going to underline the hundredths place value. Look to the right, we see an eight. And so my number goes up, so zero, one higher than zero is one. So now my number is 506 and 31 hundredths. Let's go down to the next one. 10. Underline my 10. Look to the right. I see a 5. So it's going to increase 720 rounded to the nearest 10. Round to the nearest 1. Underline the 1. And look to the right. We see a 0. So the number is 715. Now to the nearest 10th. Underline the tenth, look to the right, we see a seven, so it's 715 and one tenth. And our last one to the hundredth, look to the right, we see a one, so it stays the same, 715 and seven hundredths. Going on to our next one. We're going to underline the ten place value, be careful your place value. Because see, in the other one, they're trying to trick you. See how there's hundreds, and in this last one, there's not one? So I know you, you guys know where the tens place is. So good job, you weren't tricked there. So the tens place, we look to the right, we see zero. So this eight's going to remain the same. And so around this number round to the nearest tens is 80. Looking over to our next one, the ones place value. Underline the ones place value. Look to the right, we see a nine. So it's going to increase and be 81. Looking now to the tenths. Underline the tenths, look to the right, we see a one. So that number is going to be 80 and nine tenths. Now looking to the hundredths. So we're going to underline the hundredths. Look to the right, we see a six. So the number is going to increase, it's going to be 80 and 92 hundredths. Number seven says, Chloe bought sets of markers for all her classmates. Each set costs 99 cents. If Chloe has 28 classmates, how much did all the sets of markers cost? So we need to come up with a strategy and how we chose the strategy. So looking back at the problem, 
Each set costs 99 cents. She has 28 classmates. She bought sets of markers for all her classmates. And so I'm, what am I trying to solve? I'm trying to solve 99 cents times 28. So I know that the strategy I'm going to use is the over strategy. Why? So I'm going to choose the over strategy. And why am I choosing the over strategy? Because it's easy for me to take 99 cents, add one more cents to a dollar. And I know a dollar times 28 is $28. And I simply subtract from that 28 cents. And so $28 minus 28 cents is $27.72 is the answer. So why did I choose this strategy? Because it's easy for me to think of 99 cents as $1 and then subtract 28 cents. Number eight. The base of Tyler's cabin is 56 feet by 78 feet. Rectangle. What is the area of the base of Tyler's rectangle? So I'm going to multiply 56 times 78. Hmm, 56 times 78. The strategy I would probably use would be standard multiplication algorithm because I don't see that either number is close to 25 to use quarters. I don't really see that either number is close to like 100 to use the over strategy. So in this case, I'd probably use a standard multiplication algorithm. So let's go and solve that out using the standard multiplication algorithm. 56 times 78. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 5 is 45. Hold our place value, move to the tens place. 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 5 is 35, plus 4 is 39. And we add 6, 9, 13, and 4. 4,376. And we're finding the area. And it's in feet, so it's going to be square feet. Let's go now to number nine. A female mouse can give birth to one dozen babies in a single litter. Seventy mice each had a dozen babies called pups. Really? Pups are babies? Are what's called baby mice? Ew, I don't want that kind of pup. I want the kind of pup that's like a dog, right? <laughs> How many pups are there? So I would need to solve, hmm, I would need to think how many is in a dozen? If you think about buying eggs at the grocery store, how many come in a dozen eggs? That's right, 12. So I'm trying to solve 78 times 12. In this case, I might use the partial product strategy because I would can easily think of 10 separated into two and 10. For example, I would take 78 times 10 and then 78 times 2. Because I know 78 times 2 would just be 78 doubled. And 78 times 10 would be 780. And so 78 doubled, that'd be a 6. 156, is that correct? Then I'd add my two partial products together. 8, 9, 12, 12 13, 7, 8, 9. So the answer is 936 baby mice. Ew, so disgusting. I mean, oh, if you like mice, that's great. But really, let's come back to math. What the question is, what did you, what strategy did I, did I use? Partial products. So again, I use the partial product strategy. Why? Because it's easy for me to think about separating 10 and, or excuse me, 12 into 10 and two. Hey, if you think of a different strategy and you can write a good explanation for it, that works too. That's just one example, and that's all for today.